Okay, so this is uh, the second half of chapter 15, which is talking about the somatosensory and somatomotor pathways. And so we finished our lecture last time discussing the receptors, right? So we were just talking about the receptors, those specialized cells that detect a stimulus. And so now we're going we're gonna to do most of the lecture today on the somatosensory pathway, and then at the end we're going to look at a couple of somatomotor pathways, right? So we will be using those drawings uh, that I had you print out for Chapter 15. You're going to want to get a hold of those. Do you remember what the efferent division is? Or the, I'm sorry, the afferent division is? Right, it's sensory, it's arriving, anything that arrives at the um, central nervous system. So we're just going to kind of go over that general concept, brain, spinal cord, right? And we talked about the receptors, those specialized cells that are out in the body somewhere, whether they're in the skin or the viscera or the muscles or the joints, we talked about all of those. And then we talked about how that activates a sensory neuron. So there's the dendrites of a sensory neuron that become activated. We generate an action potential. And then that sensory neuron goes into the spinal cord. And it's going to synapse then onto another neuron. So this is now, this is our somatosensory pathway. So then that neuron is going to synapse onto another neuron. And that neuron is going to go up where? Yeah, to the thalamus. That's going to go up to the thalamus. So that's the thalamus right there. And then we have another neuron that's going to um, synapse. That, it's going to synapse onto that neuron. And then that neuron is going to go up to where? That's right. It goes up to that post-central gyrus, which is the somato, the primary spermatosensory cortex, right? So we've got three neurons here in our somatosensory, um, in our somatosensory pathway. And we're going to name these three neurons. So the first neuron is going to be called the first order neuron. The second one is going to be called the second order neuron. Pretty original. And the third one then is called the third order neuron. So both the second order neuron and the third order neuron are completely in the central nervous system. But that first order neuron starts at the receptor and then it ends somewhere in the central nervous system. So this is, this is our afferent um, division. Um, it's bringing sensory information in. And that afferent division can be divided up into either somatic or visceral sensory pathways. So it just depends on where is, um, where is it going, right? So this, in this case, where we have the first order, second order, third order, and we're ending right there at that primary somatosensory cortex, we say that is, the, that is going to be the um, somatic sensory pathway, okay? somatic. Because once it gets up here, somatic, and we talked about that the other day, somatic is bringing up all sorts of information from your general senses, right? Your general senses. So that's the somatic um, sensory pathway. There's also a visceral pathway but that visceral pathway will be sent to the brainstem. So it, it visceral ends in the brainstem. If it is a visceral um, path, sensory pathway. Okay. And we said that our um, somatic sensory pathway ends in that primary somatosensory cortex. Okay, so what's the big deal about that? If it ends in the brain stem, what does that mean? Does it reach our consciousness? No, it's not reaching our consciousness, 
let's talk about that second order neuron, okay? That red one here, that second order neuron. Somewhere, either um, somewhere in that spinal cord, that second order neuron is going to cross over to the opposite side of the spinal cord. And we call that um, decussation, or we say it decussates. So it crosses over. So in other words, um, your, the thalamus, the right side of the thalamus, is receiving information from whatever's going on on the left side of the body. Right? It's going to cross over. Okay, so we have that, right? There are three different types. Um, there's three major somatic sensory pathways. Three major ones. And so we have the spinal thalamic, the posterior column, and the spinal cerebellar. We're going to talk about them, and then I'm going to show you the diagrams that you have to use for your lab exam. It's going to be better. There we go. All right, so we have these three pathways here. We have the spinal thalamic pathway. We have the posterior column pathway and we have the spinocerebellar pathway. And where these, um, where the arrows are, they're showing where those pathways are gonna ascend to get up to the brain, right? To get up to the thalamus. So um, first of all, they're all paired. So even though you're seeing the right side of the spinal cord, that's also gonna be the same on the left side of the spinal cord, they're paired. And they all share, um, they're all going to share a, a common destination. So we're going to look at um, the different, on both sides, they share a common origin and common destination. So let's take a look, first of all, at the spinal thalamic pathway. Spinal thalamic. First of all, we see in the spinal thalamic pathway, which is down here, this pathway is going to carry a specific modality. It carries a specific modality. So we have um, the spinal thalamic is divided into a lateral and an anterior spinal thalamic. The lateral spinal thalamic carries pain and temperature. Pain and temperature. Whereas the anterior spinal thalamic carries crude touch and pressure. What we see here is that, let's take like the lateral spinal thalamic. We're going to see that the, um, the first order neuron picks up pain. And it's gonna carry that information in through that posterior root into that posterior gray horn, right? So it brings the information in and then it's gonna synapse onto another neuron. It's gonna synapse onto that second order neuron. That second order neuron then is going to cross over the spinal cord and then it's going to go up through the ventral, uh, I'm sorry, it's going to go up through the lateral spinal thalamic tract, right? So it just crosses over and then it's going to go straight up. Okay, so this is just showing you how that happens. It's just synapsing right away, the second order neuron goes all the way over to the lateral spinal thalamic tract, which we find in the lateral white column, and then it's gonna go up to the brain. Big thing in this picture, on this picture, you wanna remember that the lateral spinal thalamic carries pain and temperature, and that the anterior spinal thalamic carries crude touch and pressure. So those are our, the big things that we want to know. And you can just see why we call them, why we call one lateral and one anterior. See this lateral one right here? It's in the lateral white column right here, right? So it's going to go up to the brain in that lateral white column. That's why we call it the lateral spinal thalamic, right? It's also going from, so that's lateral, plus it's going in the spine, from the spine to the thalamus. That's why we name it that way. Lateral, because it's going up the lateral white column, 
spinal thalamic because it's going um, from the spine up to spinal cord up to the thalamus. Does that make sense? And then we have the anterior spinal thalamic and that is going to be carried up in that anterior white column up to the thalamus. So it's anterior for the anterior white column, spinal thalamic because it's going up the spinal cord to the thalamus. The posterior column pathway contains two um, fasciculi called the gracil fasciculus and the cuneate fasciculus. Do you remember where we heard about that before? We heard about the gracil nucleus and we heard about the cuneate nucleus, right? The gracil nucleus was going to receive information from where? Graceful, the lower extremity. Cuneate was going to receive information from above. All right, so this posterior column is going to be bringing information up to the thalamus, and that information is on fine touch, vibration, pressure, proprioception. The fasciculus is the track that's carrying it to the nucleus. We're going to see on another picture how it gets to the thalamus, okay? So the gracil fasciculus is carrying um, information, sensory information, from the lower extremity, the lower half of the body, whereas the cuneate fasciculus is carrying information from the upper half of the body. Carrying fine touch, vibration, pressure, and proprioception. So when we look, we're going to look at the next slide, and we're going to see the whole tract. And those are the ones that you have to be able to identify for this the lab exam, right? Okay. Um, then we have the spinal cerebellar. So the name here again is kind of uh, descriptive. It's it's um, sending sensory information from the spine into the cerebellum. Now, this is the information that's going to be carried. You know what the cerebellum does? It helps to adjust um, your motion, you know, smooth out your motion. So this is going to be receiving information from muscles, from tendons, and um, it's going to be sending information about joint position. There's two different tracks in the, in the spinal cerebellar sensory pathway. There's a posterior and an anterior. The big difference here is that posterior doesn't cross over the spinal cord and anterior does cross. So these are the descriptions of what they do. Now let's take an actual look at them and see how they're making their way up to the thalamus. I want you to be able to um, be able to identify what tract it is by looking at the picture. That's what you have to do for the lab exam. So we're going to first start out by talking about the anterior spinal thalamic pathway. Right. So again, now what we're looking at down here is we're looking at the right side of the body and we're saying crude touch and pressure because that's the anterior spinal thalamic pathway. That's, what, that's the modality that that carries, all right? So something happens, you're, you, there's some type of crude touch or pressure, that sensory neuron is going to enter in through the dorsal root, and then it's going to synapse here, uh, right in the gray matter, in that posterior gray horn, right? That then synapses onto the second motor neuron, Okay, and then the second motor neuron is going to go to that anterior spinal thalamic tract where it starts in the anterior white column. So can you see that? Can you see what's... Yep, right? So it's that, that second... Ooh, 
the second order neuron right there synapses with the first order neuron, crosses the spinal cord, and now it's gonna go up, right? It goes over to its, it, the tract where it's supposed to go. It goes to that anterior spinal thalamic tract, and now it's gonna go up. And as it travels up, it's going up through that spinal thalamic tract. It's gonna pass by the medulla, it's gonna pass by the midbrain, and it's gonna end up in that thalamus. And when it ends up in the thalamus, it's going to that ventral nucleus. Remember I told you the ventral, ventral nucleus receives like pretty much all the general senses. So it goes to that, um, that ventral nucleus in the thalamus. From there, it's going to synapse onto the third order neuron. Okay. And it's here um, in the thalamus where um, the thalamus is going to be the one to determine that, yes, this is coming from the anterior spinal thalamic pathway, so I know that it's crude touch and pressure. But now we have to localize where it came from. So to localize where it came from, that third order neuron is going to end up somewhere on that primary somatosensory cortex. And remember, that was mapped out with this homunculus. So this distorted body map on that primary somatosensory cortex. So where did that crude touch and pressure come from? Did it come from the genitals? Did it come from the lower limb, the torso, the upper limb, the face, the lips, the jaw, the tongue? Where did it come from? Wherever it came from, that's where that third order neuron is going to end up. Now we know two things. The thalamus received the information from the tract, so we know that it's crude touch and pressure. The cortex received the information about where it came from, so now you're aware of it. You're aware of what it is and where it came from, right? Now, the funny thing is, is that this tract is... Um, you know, it, it's genetically um, programmed. So sometimes when a person um, is born without a limb or if they are, um, lose a limb, these neurons will still be releasing, um, they'll still be releasing neurotransmitters and that information will still make its way up to the primary somato somatosensory cortex and they'll feel pain or they'll feel a sensation, and that's called phantom pain syndrome, right? Because this tract is genetically determined. The other thing that we have um, when we're looking at this, you know, these pathways is that uh, we have something that's called referred pain, and that's because there's so many interneurons that are synapsing all over the place on here, right? Lots of inner neurons synapsing in there that um, when you're a pain, a really strong uh, visceral pain can actually stimulate those inner neurons in this spinal thalamic pathway and make it feel like you're having, um, you're having you know, um, pain or in, here it's crude touch and pressure, but if it were in the lateral spinal thalamic, you'd be feeling pain. So for instance, a person that has a heart attack that's a strong visceral sensation, right? It's a strong visceral pain. The inner neurons then that are synapsing on those neurons, on the second and third order neurons, um, they might cause that person to feel like they're having left arm pain, back pain, jaw pain, okay? Because it's synapsing um, onto the spinal thalamic pathway, right? So that's referred pain. So we've got both phantom pain and referred pain that can influence um, this, both of these, this spinal thalamic pathway. All right, do you guys have any questions on this? Right, so you're gonna have to identify this in the lab. Um, you have to know um, what the pathway is carrying, right? You need to know that the anterior spinal thalamic is carrying crude touch and pressure. Of course, you have to know that it synapses, the second order neuron synapses with a third order neuron in the thalamus. And that's where um, 
the thalamus determines what that is because it's receiving it from that tract. So the thalamus determines what the modality is. And then that third order uh, neuron is um, localizing it, telling you where it's, where it's coming from. All right, so then let's look at the lateral spinal thalamic pathway. Now the lateral thalamic, um, spinal thalamic pathway is, um, first of all, it is, here's the right side of the body. The right side of the body is experiencing some type of pain or temperature. So let's just say pain. It could be either one. They, pain and temperature go up the same tract. So the sensory neuron comes in through the dorsal root. It again is going to synapse onto that second order neuron. The second order neuron is now going to go over to the lateral white column and now up. So the only difference is the anterior is going up, the anterior spinal thalamic is going up the anterior pathway. The lateral spinal thalamic is going up the lateral pathway. That's how the thalamus knows what it is. Is it pain or is it crude touch? Well, where did it come from, right? So that um, second order neuron goes up to the thalamus and it synapses. It's gonna synapse onto that third order neuron. The third order neuron is gonna go somewhere in that primary somatosensory cortex to localize it. So these two look very similar when you're looking at the diagrams. When you're, when you're trying to identify them, they're gonna look very similar. And so what you're really looking at is down here. It's like, where is it? Is it in the anterior white column? Is that where it's going up? Or is it going up in the lateral white column? Which column is it going up? That'll tell you which one it is, if it's anterior or um, lateral spinal thalamic pathway. Again, you know, the important thing is, what is it carrying? Yes, it crosses over. So all the pain that you feel on the right side of your body is going to the left side of your brain. All the pain you're feeling on the left side of your body is going to the right side of your brain because it crosses over in the spinal cord. Okay, let's take a look at the posterior column pathway. This is the gracil and um, cuneate, right? We're talking about the gracil and cuneate. And if you remember, we talked about the nucleus. So the gracil, the gracil and the cuneate nucleus is in the medulla. The gracil is receiving information from the lower half of the body. The cuneate is receiving information from the top half of the body. So what does the posterior column pathway carry? It's going to carry fine touch, vibration, pressure, and proprioception. That's what it carries, right? Now, this one is going to look a little different because what happens is that first order neuron, so here's your, you're having some fine touch. So fine touch is going to come in through that dorsal root, but oop, it's not going to synapse. Instead, it's going to go straight up to that gracil and cuneate nucleus in the medulla. So if it is, um, if you're talking about you're getting this fine touch from your lower extremity, then it's traveling up what we call this gracil fasciculus. That's just the track to get up to, it's just the track to get up to that gracil nucleus. Okay, the fasciculus is the track to get up there. Now, let's say we have the same type of fine touch, but it's in your upper extremity. Then it's going to, it, the um, sensory neuron is going to come in, and it's going to go all the way up to that cuneate nucleus through the cuneate fasciculus. So we have this, these first order neurons, they're not gonna synapse right away in the spinal cord. They're gonna go all the way up to the medulla before they synapse. So then what happens to them once they hit the gracil and the cuneate nucleus? 
At that point, that's where they're gonna cross over. So we're gonna see them crossing over. They, they synapse, so they're both gonna synapse in the nucleus. And the, then they're gonna cross over to the opposite side of the body, and then they're gonna go up to the thalamus. And when they go up to the thalamus, they're gonna be carried in the same tract. And we call that tract the medial lemniscus. Medial lemniscus. So all we're doing is we're talking about highways. Which highway do you take to get to the thalamus? Well, if you're fine touch vibration and pressure, you're gonna be taking the gracile and fasciculus highways, or the gracile and the um, cuneate fasciculi, and then the medial lemniscus, right? So you're, you're just thinking about this as like highways. What highway are you gonna to take to get to the thalamus? And then of course, once we get to the thalamus, then of course, we're going to, that medial lemniscus will synapse onto an, the third order neuron, which will then go up to that primary sensory cortex. So I mean, once we get to the thalamus, it's just a matter of going to wherever the localized area, where is it coming from? Go to that area on that somatosensory cortex, right? What changes is what happens below. Where, what highways is it taking to get up to that thalamus? Okay, and then lastly, we have the spinocerebellar pathway. And again, the spinal, so the spinocerebellar, that's what this one is, spino cerebellar. Okay. So this one is going to end in the cerebellum. Starts in the spinal cord, ends in the cerebellum. So with the spinal cerebellar pathway, there's uh, actually two different um, pathways. There's an anterior and there's a posterior. They're both going to end up in the cerebellum. But what you're gonna see is that the anterior cerebellum is gonna cross over and then the posterior spinal cerebellar is not, right? So let's look at the anterior spinal cerebellar. The anterior spinal cerebellar comes in through the dorsal root. It's going to synapse onto, it's gonna synapse onto the second order neuron and then it's gonna cross over, and then it's gonna go up, up, it's gonna go all the way up into the cerebellum. So that one, that one is called the anterior spinal cerebellar. And then we have the posterior spinal cerebellar that um, doesn't cross. Anterior crosses, posterior does not cross. So the posterior one is, um, in this one, we're gonna see this sensory neuron brings in the information. It's gonna synapse onto the second order neuron. The second order neuron is gonna go up the spinal cord, up the brain stem, and it's gonna go to the cerebellum. What do you notice here that's different from the other ones? Doesn't what? there's no third neuron. You're right, it doesn't go to the thalamus. You're right about that. There's no third, uh, third order neuron, which means it's never going to reach your consciousness. It's going right to the cerebellum. We have a first order, second order, no third order. Your consciousness doesn't need to know about this. This one is going to carry the sensation of balance. It needs to be working all the time and you don't necessarily need to know about it. Just briefly to talk about the visceral, because those are just general senses, just to talk real briefly about the visceral sensory pathways. Okay, they're gonna start in the organ. So they're, they're starting in the interoceptors, right? Those are inside, the receptor is inside but um, those interoceptors can be nociceptors, thermoreceptors, tactile receptors, barrel receptors, chemoreceptors. I mean, they're they, they are gonna be able to detect anything, right? Anything. 
Um, and those visceral enteroreceptors then, they can go in through the cranial nerves or they can go in through the spinal nerves. So it's, it's pretty much, they're carrying um, everything. They carry all modalities. They're carrying all modalities, um, and they are going to, um, first order neuron is going to go all the way up to the brain stem or the spinal cord, and that's where it's going to synapse, and it's going to end in the medulla oblongata. So again, same thing, no third order neuron. Ends in the medulla. And then the medulla is going to be able to communicate to the cardiovascular and respiratory centers. These are the pictures then that you're going to see in the lab exam, right? So you're, you're looking at the same thing I drew and you just have to kind of determine, you know, what it is that you're looking at, right? So here we see this one. This is fine touch and vibration. So that's a big clue. And you can see the first order neuron goes all the way up to that nucleus, the gracilis nucleus and cuneate nucleus. And then it crosses over to become the medial lemniscus. Then it goes up to the thalamus. Then it goes up to the um, primary somatosensory cortex. So which one is that? The posterior column, right? So we know that just because posterior column has the um, gracile and um, cuneate nuclei, right? The medial lemniscus. Okay. So then we have this one right here. This one, what we're looking at is we can see the, first of all, what's it, what's it carrying? Crude touch and pressure. Crude touch and pressure. Right, so it, we know that it, what it's carrying. It's coming in through that um, first order neuron. It's synapsing right away, crosses right away. Now it's, it's in that anterior white column. And then it's gonna go up to the thalamus. So that would be the anterior spinal thalamic tract, right, the anterior spinal thalamic pathway. Here, looking at this one, we can see the sensory neuron comes in. Even if we don't know what modality it is, it, it's going to synapse onto that second order neuron. Second order neuron is going all the way over to the lateral white column and then going up. We can assume, assume that that is the lateral spinal thalamic pathway, right? So is that helping you try to figure out which one it is? Okay, this one's pretty simple because we see the first order, nor oh, first order neuron is gonna synapse onto the second order neuron that crosses over and goes up to the cerebellum. And on the um, same side, on the ipsilateral side, we see the sensory neuron synapse onto the second order neuron that also goes up to the cerebellum. So we can assume that that is the spinocerebellar pathway, even if we don't know what modality it is, right? But it's it's balance, okay? So do those things kind of make sense? Do you understand, you know, what? These are just highways, highways to get to the brain. So now we're in the brain, right? So now we get to the brain, and the brain receives sensory information. It knows what modality it is, and it knows where it came from. So that interpretation center then, or that association area, is going to help to um, really um, interpret what that all was. And then that information will get sent to those integrative centers and the intra like Wernicke's, um, and that area will decide, okay, now I know what's going on, now I have to come up with a plan, and let's send out a command, right? 
So in the brain, that's what we do. It, it, you receive the information, the association areas, if you remember those, the association areas are going to interpret. The integration areas, they're going to develop a plan. And then the somatomotor pathways, they're going to carry out that command and they're going to send that message down to those effectors. So that's what we're going to talk about next is the somatomotor pathway, the, the different types of somatomotor pathways. So let's look at those somatomotor pathways. Let's look at um, the motor pathways, okay? So motor pathways... The motor pathways are where the brain has finally decided what to do and it's going to send out a command to get that done. So it's going to send out a command to an effector. It has to decide what effector is it going to send that information out to, right? So if it sends that information out to skeletal muscle, then that pathway is the somatic motor pathway. Right? If it decides it has to send that message out to anything but skeletal muscle, so for instance, glands, cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, adipocytes, if any of those things are the effectors, this we call the autonomic pathway. Autonomic pathway. So chapter 16 is all about the autonomic pathway. What we're going to look at is the somatic motor pathway. The motor pathways are just a little bit different than the um, sensory pathways. So again, we have the brain and we have the spinal cord. Okay, we still have cranial nerves and we have spinal nerves. And we have the primary motor cortex. That's where the voluntary commands are going to start. Okay, the voluntary commands. So anything up in here, this is voluntary muscle contraction. So the somatomotor pathways start there. The autonomic pathways, the autonomic nervous system pathways, they're not, um, they're going to be sent more from the, um, like the uh, hypothalamus, um, you know, in, more in the brain stem area. Okay, that's where, auto, that's where the autonomic nervous system is going to start. We're going to talk more about that when we get to chapter 16. So in the somatic motor pathway, that first neuron, so the first neuron, we call this, again, this system, if you remember, we call it the pyramidal system pyramidal. We call it that because these neurons up in here, they look like little pyramids, right? They look like little pyramids. That's why we call it pyramidal. The pyramidal system always deals with voluntary muscle contractions. So we have one neuron that is going to go all the way down to wherever it's supposed to go in the spinal cord, depending on what, where the effector is. And then we have a second motor neuron that's going to go out to the effector. So we name these things different. The one that's completely inside the central nervous system, we call an upper motor neuron. And the one that starts in the central nervous system but goes out to the effector out here, we call this one a lower motor neuron. Lower motor neuron. So we only have two neurons to deal with in the somatic motor pathway. There are three somatic motor pathways. We have corticospinal, we have medial pathway, and we have the lateral pathway. So first let's talk about the corticospinal tract or the corticospinal pathway. 
in the corticospinal pathway, there are three sub-pathways. And those pathways are just basically telling you where it's going. Where's the command going? Okay, we have to be able to send it to where it needs to go. So um, we have the cortical bulbar. This is gonna send information to your, it's gonna send commands to your head. So your face, your lips, your eyes. Then we have the anterior corticospinal. That's gonna send commands to your axial skeleton. So look at that, axial anterior. What's your axial skeleton? Skull and your vertebrae and your rib cage, right? So it's gonna send information to the muscles that are gonna control the axial skeleton, right? A axial. And then we have the lateral corticospinal pathway, and that's gonna to go to your limbs, right? L, L, limbs. Bulbar, your head looks like a bulb. With the um, corticospinal pathway, I, I do want you to know um, that only, so we have 85% of these pathways that will cross over to the opposite side of the body, 15% will not. Fifteen percent will not cross. This picture here is just showing you the highway, where the highway is in the cross section of the spinal cord. So um, here we have, this is the lateral corticospinal pathway right here. We can see that right there. We have the anterior corticospinal pathway right here. And it's not showing the um, cortical bulbar. So let's look at what you're gonna see in your lab exam. There's a mistake here. Did anybody catch it? There you go. Yep, you got it. That's anterior. So you've got the lateral and the anterior corticospinal pathway. This is, the corticospinal pathway is voluntary control of skeletal muscles. We call it the pyramidal system. So those are important things that you need to know. We said lateral L for limbs. That's sending commands to the muscles of your limbs. Anterior, we said was axial. So that's sending motor commands to the muscles that control your axial skeleton. Then we had the cortical bulbar. Bulbar. All of these originate in the primary motor cortex. That's where they're gonna originate from. Go down and take a look at this down here. This is what you're gonna be seeing. This is the primary motor cortex. The primary motor cortex has a motor map. And where is that primary motor cortex? In what gyrus? The precentral gyrus, right? So that's where your upper motor neuron is going to begin. And then that upper motor neuron is going to descend going to synapse onto the lower motor neuron, and maybe it's going to go out to skeletal muscles um, right from the midbrain. Maybe it's going to go all the way down to the medulla, or maybe it's going to go all the way down through the spinal cord, and then it's going to synapse onto a lower motor neuron and exit through the ventral root, okay? So it, it just depends on where is it going. Is it going to, you know, muscles of the head and the neck? Is it going to the axial? Where is it going? Upper body, lower body, it just depends. Where is it going to end up? If it crosses over, we said it is what? Which one? Which one crosses over? Anterior. Anterior. 
right? Anterior crosses over. We can see it crossing over, right? Anterior crosses. The ants cross the road. All right, so that's, um, that's the uh, corticospinal. I want to show you a little bit about the, I want to talk a little bit about the extra pyramidal because we keep talking about the pyramidal motor pathway. Well, there is also an extra pyramidal pathway, and this pathway is involuntary. It's involuntary. It's automatic. It's going to be sending commands to muscles that control balance, muscle tone, posture, and even locomotion, because locomotion can be pretty automatic. So it's all those automatic things that you really don't need to know about. There's two pathways, lateral and rubrospinal. The lateral, I'm sorry, lateral and medial. The lateral one uh, is going to control the distal limbs. More precise movements. Where are your distal limbs? Forearm down to your hand shin down to your feet, right? It controls distal limbs, more precise movements. Whereas the medial one is going to control muscles of the neck, head, and proximal limbs. So much more clunky motions. The medial is gonna just have more clunky motions. Gross movements of the trunk and the proximal limbs. Now the reason why I bring up the extra pyramidal is because you will end up hearing about it in pharmacology. It, there's a, there's a um, kind of like a syndrome that's called um, the extra, or it's side effects of certain drugs that they call extra pyramidal side effects. And so those side effects are from um, an improper dosing of like uh, psychotic drugs, right? Uh, the antipsychotic drugs, okay? And so um, if they are, um, if they are um, getting too much of this drug, it's going to be stimulating too many um, of these um, neurons, and a person could end up with tremor, slurred speech, um, like feeling of inner restlessness, they just can't sit still, um, anxiety, distress, a whole lot of uh, movement disorders. Um, they're going to be contracting like uncontrollably, you know, um, slowness of thought. They can't just get those thoughts out. So they call those extra pyramidal side effects. And these are side effects of antipsychotic drugs. They are affecting the extra pyramidal system, and that's why you need to know about that. So this here is the uh, picture that you're going to see on the exam, on the lab exam. And so it's easy to tell right away that, you know, that we're going from the primary motor cortex down, so we know it's descending, so that we know it is a motor pathway. And this is the only motor pathway that you have to uh, identify, right? So with this motor pathway, um, you can see it's starting at the primary motor cortex, and those neurons are descending down. They're going to cross over and synapse onto the lower motor neuron and come out. There's only two neurons. The arrow shows you the direction. So if you look here, you can see that that arrow is saying it's going out to skeletal muscles, so we know it's a motor pathway starting in the cortex. And it's going to go down to the spine. So it's cortical spinal pathway. This ends the second video for chapter 15.